Good evening and welcome in once again to Gimnasio Universitario in Salapa, Veracruz, Mexico for tonight's BCL Americas game between Real Esteli of Nicaragua and Halcones de Salapa of Mexico alongside Andrew Hunt. I'm Craig Feta and we're so glad you can be with us wherever you're tuned in from around the Americas or around the world. Andrew, both of these teams can breathe easier now that they've both defeated Gladiadores in this window and are through to the quarterfinals. But now they're playing for position. The winner of this game wins the group, and the loser of this game takes on the winner of Group B, which will likely be Kinsa. So you want to win this game so you don't have to face the top seed from another group. So it's still something to play for in this game. Yeah, that's correct, Craig. Uh, personally, I'm trying to win every single game. <laughs> but you, you're right. That uh, gives a little bit of added motivation uh, to try to get what's potentially the, the easier route uh, to the championship. We get a look at tonight's officials. Juan Fernandez of Argentina, Jenna Renault of the USA, and Ramiro in Chalspe of Brazil. Halcones are led by some newer faces that Paco almost brought in after the first window. Jordan Glynn is averaging 13.3 points and 7.7 .7 rebounds per game while Alexis Elsener is putting up 16.3 points per game. Mexico national team member Gabriel Giron is adding about another 15, and Rahad Mahalbasic is adding about 11 more. Paco almost has certainly pushed the right buttons personnel-wise. Yeah, they're really clicking. Uh, I'd say I'm probably going to say that I've liked their team chemistry the best, although I would say either Franca or uh, their opponent tonight, uh, Riel Esteli, would be close um, and possibly better. We'll, we'll see if uh, Real Esteli can uh, show us something here this evening. Esteli, meanwhile, relies on Terrell Holloway at 17.8 17 points per game as we look at the starters for Halcones. But Esteli relies on Terrell Holloway 17.8 points per game, which is fifth in the tournament in scoring. Emmett Williams adds 15.4 points and eight rebounds per game. And the big Cuban, Ismael Romero, adds 17.6 points and 9.2 rebounds per game. He put up 25 and 8 against Alcones last time. Oh, and Esteli added Virgin Island scoring machine Walter Hodge. What do all those numbers add up to? The answer is a very, very potent offense. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with you on that one, Craig. I'm not too great at adding up numbers. Uh, I will say uh, I wasn't. Well, impressed just keep the with, shoes uh, off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I'm going to keep them on now. I don't. No math tonight. Uh, but uh, yeah, the other night I thought uh, Romero was uh, pretty impressive. He was a force down low, and uh, Holloway showing that he's a, a veteran, uh, really keeping things together. We noticed that he uh, he spoke to a lot of players on his team, so uh, keeping them on the same page there. Again, the starters for Halcones de Salapa, Jordan Glynn, Daniel Bejarano, David Cubillan, Gabriel Giron, and Rossi Mahobasic. For Francisco Paco Omos, Halcones playing on their home floor, so it's going to be a fun environment tonight. Earlier on, Obras Sanitarias defeated Udek 79-65, and that game was a lot closer than the score indicated. Udek had it within five with two minutes to play, and they absolutely ran out of steam. It was an exciting Yikes. game. Tomorrow, Boca Juniors and Flamengo will get things started early, 11, 10 a.m. local time, 9, 10 a.m. Eastern. And then in the evening, we'll have Sao Paulo and Nacional, 9.40 p.m. local time and 7.40 p.m. Eastern time. Setting my alarm right now, Craig. All right, you do that. Don't want to miss the early wake-up call. For Real Estelí, it's Terrell Holloway, Adonis Enriquez, Michael Facuade, an interesting choice to start. Ismael Romero and Walter Hodge for David Rosario in his fifth season. Well, we are underway. And Bejarano launches the first three of the game and misses. Ha 
Hodge into the front court, picked up by Cubion. Going a little bounce pass there to Michael Fakuade, and he says, I'll show you why I'm in the starting lineup. Scores the easy bucket there. Yeah, I love this. They've got the two traditional big men in the starting lineup. So I'm hoping they'll, well, as, as somebody scores inside there, uh, but hoping that they can uh, control the glass a little bit better with these two in the game. Oh, beautiful drive there. Ismail Romero. And it's a 4-2 lead for Esteli. There at the other end, though, Mahobasic again. It's, it's a big man's game right now, Craig. All so eight far points. it is. Yes, keep going. Romero misses it off the glass. Big man's game, might as well let you do the play-by-play -play as well. <laughs> Jeroen uh, to Maho Basic, and now Kubian Launches the three-pointer, no good. Rebound to Fakuade. Fakuade did not have a great game playing in his debut for Real Esteli, which kind of surprised me why he was starting in this one. He was 0-6 from the floor. He had four rebounds and two assists against Gladiadores. It's, it's possible maybe his coach saw some of those intangibles uh, doing some things that he liked. That could be a could lineup be. Also, situation, too. Also, matchups. Also, maybe just wanted to bring Emmett Williams in off the bench. There's Gabriel Huron. Yeah, Williams can definitely provide some energy uh, off the bench. There's no doubt about that. Alconis on top for the first time, 6-4. I believe they led 2-0 early. Oh, beautiful turnaround fadeaway jump shot by Michael Fakuade. And he's telling this play-by-play -play announcer to go stuff it. Yeah, we did not see that the other day. <laughs> no, we, we absolutely did not. He had trouble hitting water if he fell out of a boat against Gladiadores. Oh, beautiful spin move by Giron! My goodness! Arrow there for the putback. Romero now with four points, and we are tied at eight. Don't forget, Romero had 25 points last time against Halcone, so no surprise here that he's got a couple of buckets early. Paco almost set by something. Yeah, both, both his baskets right now are just hustle, too. He had the good roll to the basket and went hard to the rim. And then the last one, just a cleanup where he runs the floor and grabs the ball and right place, right time. Giron the steal. A great finish by Jordan Glynn up over the taller defender. Conis by two, outside to Fakuade. Missed the three-pointer, so now he's over four from beyond the arc. Gibeon thought about the three there. Mahobasic at the left elbow. Across to Glynn, now Mahobasic again. Bejarano hits the side of the backboard. He's a little slow getting up. Hodge with the nifty behind-the-back spin move. But he draws the foul at center court. Center court, that's more of a tennis term, isn't it? So we call it midcourt. He was, he was in the middle all the way around. I, I'll give it to you, center, yeah. All right, I appreciate that. In the Thank you for bailing me out there. Yeah, on the beak. <laughs> Hodge to Holloway. Holloway raises and shoots and scores. My goodness, that's a terrifying offensive combination. Terrell Holloway and Walter Hodge. And then you bring Emmett Williams in as well. Yeah, Stilly's really clicking right now. So 
Westerly back on top by one. Mahobasa catches the air oh, nice. and shot out of midair, but missed the putback. After fighting for the rebound, he wanted a foul. Leads to the officials on his way up the court. No call. And oh. then the alley-oop from Walter Hodge to Ismael Romero. My goodness, Romero had to fly to get that one. Romero's all over and the place up here. quieted this Halcones crowd. Oh. And now Mahobasic got the foul call. I'm with Romero on this one, I believe. I have the luxury of watching this. Oh, no, I, I like this replay better. Yes. Ismail Romero had to use every bit of his vertical leap to get up for that one. That shows what a great player Walter Hodge is. Just his second game playing with Ismail Romero and he threw that alley-oop up right where Romero could go get it. Well, free throw is good by Maho Basic, and he has a seat. And Halcone is back to within one. Jonas Enriquez had it. Now Hodge has it. Hodge with the beautiful feed into Fakuade. Draws the foul. Oh, no. They're going to say he traveled. Oh, that was a late call, but I, I thought I saw a travel. I thought they had missed it, but uh, better late than never. Well, one official had the foul call. The other had the travel. So let's have a look. One, two. Yep. He might have traveled oh. twice. Yeah. <laughs> Cubion from 19, no good. Rebound fought for by Devon Jefferson, and then he draws the foul. Devon Jefferson's not going to put up huge numbers for you, but he is going to work his tail off under the bucket. 7.7 .7 points, 5.3 rebounds out of Linwood, California. Played collegiately at Southern Cal. Finished up there in 2008. All Pac-10 honorable mention. First team all freshman. Another guy with a passport full of stamps. He was the Korean Player of the Year in 2014. Russian MVP in 12. Israeli Super League. Sixth man of the year in 2009 and an all star in Turkey as late as 2017. So Devon Jefferson has brought it wherever he's been. Speak of the devil, there he is. He's also one of those guys that you look at and he's expressionless most of the time out there. And He's one of those guys that you look at, and just by a facial expression, you think, bah, he doesn't care. He's, but that's not the case at all. He just doesn't have a lot of expression on his face. Yeah. He's a businessman. Beautiful stop and turn by Gabriel Giron. And Halcones back on top, 15-13. Both teams off to a pretty good start uh, shooting lies here. Yeah, Real Esteli, 67%, 6 of 9 from the floor. Halcones, 6 of 13 for 46%. Another one of those really giant rowdy. Andrew Hunt heads. Yes. I'm everywhere. Hopefully they don't catch it on fire. Throw. <laughs> well, the Pyros are at the other end for this uh, this first half. 
Ah, yes. Tied back up at 15 after the two free throws by Terrell Holloway. He's got five now. Beautiful. Oh, what a beautiful feed to Hiron again. This is one of those games, Andrew, I get the feeling I'm going to run out of room on my scorebook. It's a good problem to have. Yeah, it really is. I've done games where it's been an 80 point blowout. And you're just doodling in your scorebook at that point. I think I did a game between Brazilian women and maybe Peru or Paraguay or something like that. And Brazil won it by 80. Those are the tough ones to do, especially when you're by yourself. You probably still filled your scorebook up that time, just uh, <laughs> with wonderful little drawings. Yeah, I was, I was reading weather forecasts at that point, talking about some of the ladies' scoring averages in eighth grade. Alconis on a little run here as Alexis Elsener gets his first two points. And the home team up by four. And now a foul by Gabriel Giron. I think that was one of those fatigue fouls. <laughs> uh, Holloway, he's a, he's a veteran. He kind of wraps up that arm a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you saw him laughing with your own after that play. Oh my yeah, goodness, said, Holloway again. He's telling Grown, hey man, that's a foul. That's a foul. <laughs> with a smile on his face. <laughs> that's what they called, so it's a foul. Now Giron giving it back to Jefferson. Jefferson mugged by Romero on the way up. Yeah, Romero. Romero was uh, helping over, so when this kick comes right here, you see he has to come over and anticipates it isn't going to go right up. Good fake there by Jefferson to, to draw the foul. Now, back in the 80s in the NBA, Romero would have pulled Jefferson onto the floor after belting him across the forehead. <laughs> but honestly, yeah, I'm glad they don't play up. Your, your whole I'm arm glad. comes across the head in that si yeah. situation. I'm glad they don't play games like that anymore. Yeah. I've never been a fan of that argument. Players these days can't, you know, survive a boxing match and play basketball. <laughs> yeah. Twenty eighteen Helconis. Fakuade for three. That is no good. I almost started to call that one as in. Maybe, maybe I jinxed it. Oh, beautiful spin move to the bucket. Your own wanting the foul call. Didn't get it. And now, are they going to get Devon Jefferson? I believe they are. Yeah, Jefferson with the push there on Ismael Romero. And he came out of there with his hands up saying, come on, man. I don't know, that was that's kind of a tough foul call to me. Romero didn't really do anything to box out or anything. He's just kind of stand there, and it's a live ball situation. Not as warm as where we were in Buenos Aires just a little bit ago. Still 83 in Buenos Aires with 75% humidity. It's 63 here in Salapa, but 85% humidity. Still going to get a good sweat going here in the gym. Not to mention with all the pyrotechnics going off. There's some more. Hey. Tata Fernandez. Jefferson. No, that's Gabriel Giron. 
And Real Esteli wants timeout. A little 5 0 run by Halconis. A six point lead at 24 18. Been an entertaining game so far. Both teams shooting the ball very well. Halconis, 55.6% overall. Real Esteli, 53.9% overall. Yeah, they're not disappointing. I anticipate this could be one of the better games we see, and uh, so far, so good. And we get a look at David Rosario in his fifth year. Assisted by Noel McKenz and Noel Akindele. You see Williams is here, he's going to be in the game now. Look at the beautiful finger roll by Alexis Elsener. Pointer by Terrell Holloway. I think, I think potentially what we're going to see here is uh, trying to enter the ball to the left and possibly an, a back screen to the opposite side. So look to see whoever's in the corner opposite the ball here is maybe diving into the basket. Holloway to Hodge. Hodge bump, no call. Puts up the shot. Won't go, but the tip-in right. is there. And there's Emmett Williams. Median impact. 30 seconds to play in the first quarter. Devon Jefferson on the block. Taking down the smaller Emmett Williams. Williams had no chance there against Devon Jefferson. Jefferson's got him by three or so inches, but probably by about 40 pounds. If I'm Williams, I'm, I'm going to give him a little bit of space. He's the, the quicker defender. So the guy with size just lay off a little bit. And the first quarter comes to an end with Halconis de Salapa on top of Real Esteli by the score of 26 20. Some good offense in this first quarter, as we expected, when you have this many quality players on both sides. And as we look at the numbers here, both teams shooting the lights out from two-point range. Halconis has not made a three yet. For Halconis, Alexis Elsener, two points. Shadow Fernandez, two. Jordan Glynn, two. Glynn's also got three rebounds. Devon Jefferson, four points, three boards, and two assists. Gabriel Giron, ten points. And Rasid Mahobasic with six. For Real Esteli, Michael Fakuade, four points. Walter Hodge has not scored yet. Terrell Holloway with eight. Emmett Williams with two. Adonis Enriquez has not scored yet. Ismael Romero with six. So you look at some of these guys who haven't scored yet, like Adonis Hernandez averaging 15 points per game. Walter Hodge, we know what he can do offensively. David Cubion for Alconis has not scored yet. So we've got some guys who can light it up who haven't really shown anything yet, and we've still got a pretty good offensive game so far. Yeah, we've, we start off more with the, the big guys scoring. We'll see if they can uh, translate from an inside to an outside game. Got a lot of stuff going to the basket, which is uh, what I like to see. But you know there's going to be, there will be more three-pointers uh, as time goes on. 
Yeah, very unusual. Just eight three-pointers combined in the first quarter. That's some old-school basketball there. I'm here for it. <laughs> Back underway here in Salapa alongside Andrew Hunt. My name is Craig Feta. Hope you've been enjoying this one so far. We sure have. It's been an offensive showcase to this point. Welcome into our viewers in the USA on FanDuel TV, in South America on Direct TV, and around the rest of the world on the BCL America's YouTube channel. Hodge nearly intercepted it. Nearly a backcourt violation. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Fernandez gets it back and strokes it. Just how they drew it up. Biggest lead of the game now at nine. Glenn from the corner for three won't go. Real Lee has got to get uh, something going here. Yeah, they've had some opportunities with a fast break, and they, they just haven't converted them. That's, uh, that's really hurtful. If you miss on a fast break, now you've got to sprint back on defense, you know, where you just left. Uh, it's not ideal. I believe they just called Walter Hodge for a foul. Bejarano. Hits the free throw. They called an offensive foul on Walter Hodge, and then I don't know if he got teed up. Yeah, they teed up Walter Hodge. Hodge is another guy who should know better. And it's just extra points you're giving away. Hey. More big man action. Rasid Mahobasic dunks that one. 33-year-old Austrian has eight points. <laughs> and I wonder if that lob this was... is a case. Sorry, it's a case that Andrew, lob was where just Real... a bit outside. Where Real Esteli almost has too many weapons. And you can't feed all the dogs. And some of the dogs get frustrated and they force things and a three no good rebound tipped to Romero. Oh beautiful pass by the big man to Hodge. Hodge with the circus layup did not fall in but he goes to the free throw line. Man Hodge got up there. Foul was on Alexis Elsner and then Hodge stares him down. Free throw falls in for Hodge. That is his first point of the game. Hard to believe with 8.06 to play in the second quarter. Granted, this is just his second game with Real Esteli, so still trying to work him in a little bit. But this is a guy who's been able to find points wherever he's gone. Man, that's two errant passes in a row, one for each team. Maybe not in the road. Conus by 10. They've led by as many as 12. Oh, what a beautiful drive. Jared Ruiz. Fernandez thought about that three. Now Alexis Elson around the drive. Into the corner for Bejarano for three. Splash that one! Bejarano's got four. A 
and just the second three pointer beyond the arc for Helconis as Ruiz scores again. Now Elsener, I'm not sure if he hit the side of the backboard going up or what, but that one was not even close. Now at the other end, Adonis Enriquez running the floor and getting the easy layup. And now Paco almost wants timeout. Yeah, it was great ball movement on the fast break there. So still up by nine. I like this timeout here by Paco Olmos, Andrew. Yeah, Esteli was getting a little bit of momentum, so this is definitely good. Try to settle things down, draw up a play, protect the lead. Great strategy. We play a static on dynamic. I don't understand. To Robert, I don't understand. Why no? Why no? Why no? Why no? Because his pulse is so, he's point zero. And you play a slow. And don't face his shot. No to Robert. Hey. I won't dominate the pay. Dominate the pay. And right now, Yarel Reed, Yarel Reed, he made five in a row. A score, a score, a score. Hey, you score. He's not he's not happy about Ruiz uh yeah. scoring. <laughs> and to be fair, some of Ruiz's baskets have been pretty easy looks. And you see Ruiz started that play, even though he didn't score. We call that a, a, a hockey assist. He assisted the assist. Yeah, you get you get that uh, you get that credit in hockey, but not in basketball. So Halconis up by seven now. Giron. Three on the way from Jader, and that's good. Jader Fernandez hits another three, and the lead's back to 10. At the other end, the three rattles out by Hodge. Fernandez to the left elbow, to Mahabasic to Huron. And now Glenn, shot clock at four. Huron says thanks. Has to put up the long three. Got a pretty good look at it. But Romero pulls down the rebound, nearly loses it and does. Wow, what an effort by Daniel Bejarano. Go. And now with David Rosario wanting timeout as Paco almost comes out out of the floor applauding his team's effort. Yeah, even in retrospect now, even better timeout that they took their uh, Alcones. Because they've regained the momentum and forced the other team now to take their own timeout. So they get to rest and draw things up again on their dime. Conis has tied their biggest lead of the game at 12, 40 to 28. We can't hear David Rosario there, but he's got to be frustrated as well because he's got so many potent offensive weapons. Seems like they're having trouble putting it together in this game so far. You know SLE's gonna make a run. Two games coming up tomorrow. Hope you can join us for those. It's gonna be Boca Juniors and Flamengo. Early tip for that one, 11, 10 a.m. local time, 9, 10 a.m. Eastern time. And then it's going to be Sao Paulo and Nacional. 
uh, 9.40 p.m. local time, 7.40 p.m. Eastern time. And Andrew, wait till you see those fans from Nacional. They are an absolute blast. I'm looking forward to it. So far, Hodge this with the home nice crowd fast. here is my favorite. Yeah. Folks here in Salapa have shown up and shown out for their team. And they have bolstered them to a 12-point lead as Fibian James reaches in. I believe Holloway is telling him there, yeah. like, yeah, no, I was definitely <laughs> shooting. That was a shooting foul. And he says, ah, I don't think you were shooting. I feel like if I was playing against Holloway, I would probably tell him to stop talking to me. I mean that in the best way possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's one of those guys who's going to be in your ear the whole game. Right. About every subject. Yeah, it's it's part of the game, but I just be like, all right, I, I don't, I'm not listening to you now. <laughs> Who's the best trash talker you ever played with or against? Well, it's it's funny you say that because I I didn't really ever feel like people that trash talk me. I didn't care. I, I really didn't. It didn't affect me. I would just, I kind of had the, the mindset of if I'm going to do bad, I'll do it on my own. I don't, <laughs> I don't need you to tell me I'm, I'm doing bad or good. <laughs> I like to think I was pretty even keel. If somebody put a nice move on me and scored over me, I didn't, I didn't lose my mind. I said, Hey, they, they played well, as long as I played solid defense, just on to the next one. Hodges pass tipped around out of bounds. That should be Alconis ball. The more I think on a guy that I think You'll remember, I, I believe it was uh, Ryan Anderson, former oh, yeah. Nebraska player. Yeah, he could yep. he could talk quite a bit. <laughs> I I don't even know if he was necessarily talking trash. Just right, just right. Talking. I know it's, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> but he played hard. I never I always liked having him oh, yeah. on my team, and I hated playing against him. Sure, what all this discussion is here now. Paco almost being walked back to his bench. So now Walter Hodge to the free throw line. And Daniel Bejarano is whistled for the technical foul. That's who Holloway was jawing with. I, mean, I didn't see anything that Bejarano. See what he did. I say it, at the time we saw Bejarano just kind of was laughing off the the comments. It didn't look like he was reacting in any. Yeah, exactly. Way. It's been something after that. Oh, beautiful oh, baseline man. drive by Romero. I said I was impressed with him in the beginning, and he's playing even better than I recall from our last game. He's really showing his full repertoire. Yeah, nice, solid defense there. Yeah. You can see Mahabasic <laughs> led with the elbow and then initiated the contact. That was that was that called. I was going to ask if that was an offensive foul, or I didn't know if maybe that was a travel. It didn't seem like a travel. Yeah, it was an offensive foul on Mahalbasa. So a good call there by the officials. Holloway feeding Romero. He's fouled on the way up, and Holloway. Yeah, he, he wants unsportsmanlike on that. 
Yeah, so did Mahabasa, I think. Let's see if we can get a look at it here. Oh, yeah. He went hard across the arm. <laughs> Devon Jefferson saying, can we get a review? Yeah. That's, that's I don't know. one of those in the, in, in the USA and maybe Europe, that's just a good hard foul. Right. Yeah. I, the way I look at that is if I'm going for the ball and you go past me, well, guess what? I'm going to hit your arm. You know, I didn't hit you in the head. It's not like I, you know, kicked your foot. Uh, so I, I, yeah, I'm but all in right. South America, man, they, they, uh, yeah, they, they tend to call that the unsportsman like more often. I respect so the call. Romero I just don't like free it. Throws. Yeah, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. By the letter of the law, that's an yes, unsportsman. In, in, in my own custom rule book, uh, that would <laughs> not be the same. I would call Under it house rules. Thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if you play basketball in my driveway, that's just a common foul. Right. So it leads down to five. You have to, and you have to shoot free throws from the second violation. crack. Boy, and that happened right in front of Real Esteli's bench, man. They got to help. Somebody's got to be watching the shot clock. You need a Tim Sack on the sideline yelling red. <laughs> red. <laughs> Shout out Tim Sack. David Cubion pulling up, and it falls in. I think that's the first bucket for Cubion, and it is. A regular memory lane right now. Yeah, get back to seven. Ruiz for three. Splash! Oh. Wow! After it looked like he's he dragged right his now. feet and could have been whistled for the tech or for the uh, travel. I think as long as he had taken that dribble, he was all right. Yeah. Out the bucket for Gabriel Giron. Back to six with a free throw on the way, but Esteli had it down to just four a moment ago. We know they're too good offensively to stay down for long. Who did they get on that foul? Was that Hodge? I'll say, I hope not Romero. I think that was continuation from, from yeah, the Hodge. Yeah, that was Hodge. And that's already three fouls on Walter Hodge. And if he has one ding on his game, it's that he tends to commit a lot of fouls. But you live with it because of the amount of points that he puts up. Of course, we haven't seen that in his game in almost a half with Real Esteli to this point. That last shot's what we call a heat check. Right. Jefferson to Giron. And Hodge just had to let him go. Oh, a beautiful jump hook by Fabian James. Back to nine. 220 to play second quarter. Hodge. Great defense here. Yeah. Beverano wasn't afraid of Walter Hodge and his reputation. Oh my goodness, oh. Terrell Holloway. That's multiple three points for him, I believe. Hey, he's three of five from beyond yeah. the arc. 13 points now. Huey on. Fabian James again, back to Cubion, back to James. James shoots it up over Ruiz and hits. That was shot by Fabian James. I'm running out of ruin my scorebook. I'm going to run out of ink in my pen. Hodge, the beautiful, beautiful. drive and dish, and Romero with the finish.
these guys have so, shown some pretty good, uh, pretty good feel for each other, even though this is only the second game they've played with Real Esteli. We heard a buzzer yeah, go off. Not sure what that was all about. I thought, I thought maybe it's timeout. It it seems like a time I would probably take a timeout if I was yeah Conus. But everybody kind of looked around and was wondering what was going on. so far 49 points for Halcones de Salapa 43 points for Real Esteli yeah, Greg that, Anytime that replay you can... we just watched sorry the replay we just watched uh, not all those shots were very easy some of these are a pretty high level of degree of uh, difficulty uh, and they're, they're still making them, so that kind of explains the, the good shooting percentage. In a game where you've got a 24-second shot clock and everybody's playing pretty solid defense, you're inevitably going to throw up some shots that aren't great, but they're necessary. And in this game, I think we're seeing them make a lot of those on both sides. And again, keep in mind, these are 10-minute FIBA quarters for our viewers in the USA, not accustomed to watching FIBA basketball. And anytime you can put up more than 20 points in a quarter, you're doing pretty well. Alcones put up 26 in the first quarter. Both teams have put up 23 so far in this frame. Could be headed for the century mark today. Yeah. This appears to be an extended timeout. I'm not entirely certain what's going on here because you remember there was some some confusion when the timeout was first called. And now there seems to be a lot of milling about wonder do we have a do we have a clock or a scoreboard issue potentially could be we saw that in our last about? game actually no I'm thinking <laughs> I'm thinking of the first game I did today in the in the Belgian Pro League there was an issue with the shot clock so they had to play without a shot clock and that really came into effect or rather came to affect the game on a couple of occasions Team was whistled for a shot clock violation. They didn't know that it was winding down. This is near near capacity crowd. I'd see just a few empty yeah. seats here and there, but this thing's full even even in the upper deck there. So finally back underway, approaching the one minute mark. Cubion. Jefferson, Jefferson goes up. Oh, and he's denied at the rim. Giron standing there all by himself. He wants the ball. Catches it and shoots it. Missed. Rebound back tapped. And Elson gets reset the off and three set. Jefferson inside to Giron. Back outside. Giron again has it stolen. Oh, no. And here comes Terrell Holloway. He gives it up to Jared Ruiz. Holloway says, I've got 13 points. I don't have an assist yet, so here you go, big fella. <laughs> Are you seconds. accusing him of stat padding? No. <laughs> he was being unselfish to help out a teammate. Uh, Elsinore, the long three, missed. 
Rebound tapped. Block at three now two. And what? I'm puzzled. That seemed to be an awfully long three seconds. Well, SMA did just... not get the shot off. And it goes to halftime with Halcones on top. Yeah, Holloway needed to shoot that. 49-45. Stellar shooting numbers from inside for both teams. Neither team great from outside, but it's not having a huge impact because they're not putting up volume three-pointers. Individually, for Halcones de Salapa, David Cubion, two points, Alexis Elsener, two, Gabriel Hiron, 13 points, three rebounds, four assists, Fabian James, four points, Devon Jefferson, four points, three boards, two assists, Daniel Bejarano, six points, three boards, two dimes, Chatter Fernandez, eight points, Jordan Glynn, two points, four boards, and Rasid Mahalbasi with eight points. For Real Esteli, Michael Fakuade, four points. He was active and involved early, got those four points, and then didn't hear much from him after that. Although he might have been the one that got that block on Devon Jefferson. Terrell Holloway, 13 points. Ismail Romero, 12 points. Five rebounds, two assists. Jared Ruiz, nine points. Emmett Williams, two. Adonis Enriquez, two points. Walter Hodge, just three, but he's got five assists and two rebounds, and that rounds out the scoring for Real Esteli. Halconis leading the rebounding battle, 17-11, just one offensive rebound for Real Esteli. Ten turnovers for Esteli, seven for Halconis in that first half. All those numbers add up to a 49-45 halftime lead for Halconis. And we will be back with second half action live from Gimnasio Universitario in Salapa, Veracruz, Mexico, in just a few moments.
Welcome back to Gimnasio Universitario in Salapa, Veracruz, Mexico. For tonight's BCL Americas game between Real Esteli and Halcones de Salapa. After 20 minutes of play, Halcones have a four-point lead. 49-45, some great offensive action in that first half. But a great defensive play there to start off the third quarter with a block. Alongside Andrew Hunt, my name is Craig Feta. I expect we're going to have a great second half here as we have two offensively loaded teams. As Ismael Romero will go to the free throw line. Romero, two of two from the stripe. He's got 12 in this game. He had 25 against Halcones the last time they played. And the first free throw is in. Andrew Hunt, if I ask you to look into your crystal ball for the second half, what do you see? Well, Craig, I don't have a crystal ball. I do have an, a magic eight ball, uh, if you'd like me to shake it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, shake that uh, but up and see what you find. Funny, it's, it's, now that I see it, it's actually sitting right here. I, I, I kind of do want to shake it up. Give me one second. It's going to say ask again later. That pass intercepted. Sorry, I'm back. Fakuade, and now Hodge gives it up to Romero for the easy lay-in. Yeah, if I if I had to guess, I just I think we'll see more of the same that we saw in the first half. Pretty evenly matched, pretty under control, a little high on the turnovers, but um, I think that we'll see equal to or less turnovers in the second half. Uh, so those will be relatively low. Pretty move by Gabriel Giron. He's got 15 points now. Halcone is back up by three. Oh, the lob to Fakuwade a little too high and behind him. Now Hodge with the floater. That's good. Effortless. Giron again at the other end. How Conus has come out a little uh, lackadaisical here with their with their effort. I don't know if they keep that up. I think we'll uh, hear it from their coach here in a bit. Yeah, a little shove there in the back by David Cubigan. That's two fouls already on Hal Conus. Ruiz, he had a great first half. Nine points. Turns a starting spot in the second half on the floor. Hodge nearly turns it over. Ruiz for three. That's good! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. And we are tied at 53. Ruiz has 12. And you know that's not going to make Paco almost happy. He wanted them to get a body on Ruiz in the first half. Your own into the paint. Kicks it out. Three on the way for Glenn. You know, the physics of the basketball amazes me sometimes. It looks like a ball can be more than halfway down, and somehow it pops back out. Yeah, try having that happen when you just shot it. It's even worse. <laughs> Real Esteli on top by two now, and Hodge takes it the whole way himself, and I sense a timeout coming from Paco Olmos. Yeah, I was just saying. I think yeah, we may he's have standing him. there with his arms folded. I can't believe he hasn't called one. It's still early, so maybe letting the team play out of this. You've got some time. Here we go. Slow down the ball. Mahobasic misses the running hook shot. Your own gets the rebound. Glenn for three. Splash! <laughs> Had been a 12-4 run by Real Esteli to that point. Conus back to within one at 57-56. To the corner for Ruiz, back out to Holloway. 
Now that three-pointer just short. And an easy bucket for Giron. It looked like Holloway was just willing to concede a layup if he didn't get that foul. But now Halcones back yep. on top by one. At that point, when you've got numbers and you're not the biggest guy on the court, I'm, I'm not opposed to letting the basket happen. Hodge works his way into the lane, tried to thread the needle to Fakuade. Beautiful double clutch finish there by Jordan Glenn. He is rolling now. He's got seven. Now Halcone is back on top by three. Romero outside to Fakuade. Romero gets it back. Working on Mahal Basic. Oh, oh, oh yep. shot. Oh, he called him the little baby. He's rocking the cradle. Romero now with 19. He leads all scores. Actually, no, he's tied with Gabriel Giron as David Cubillon scores from outside. And Alcones just like that, back on top by four. feeling, Andrew, that this is going to be like a heavyweight fight. Both of these teams are going to be connecting with haymakers, send the other team reeling for a few moments, and then they get their composure back and throw a few haymakers of their own. Yeah, normally basketball is a game of runs, and that's what we're seeing so far. Each team yeah. putting together a run and then the other replying. And it makes for a great and now game. Now is running, yeah. Back-to-back -back threes by Cubigan. He's got eight. Just like that, the lead is seven. After Esther Lee had a 12-4 run, it's a 13-2 run now for Alconis. There for the putback. Is that Fabian James or Jordan Glenn? I believe it was Glenn. And just like that, the lead is back to nine. Wow, what a drastic turn of events in the last two minutes. Yeah, we mentioned, we thought that maybe uh, Alcones would call a timeout. They did not, and the team responded even without the timeout. So, uh, good, good show of play by them. Well, to run. Over the last minute and a half. Point swing since Esteli led 57 to 53. To a 15 this is the type, run. Yeah, this is the type of game where this this home crowd can really make things difficult for the opposing team as well. Now Ruiz hounded. Here's Emmett Williams. 
Clean that board up. Ruiz, I beg your pardon, Romero. And then Ow. finally there for the tip-in, Emmett Williams. Wow, indeed. Four points now for Williams. It's it's rare that we see a rebound battle like that where we don't have a foul call. Yeah, now Terrell Holloway. On the floor helped up by Hodge and Huron. Let's see what happened to him. Looks like he took one in the mug. So Holloway will have a seat. Get the cobwebs shaken out. Cubion. He launches another three. That looked like it was going in. Romero the rebound. That's his seventh rebound to go along with his 19 points. Nice. You saw you saw that play develop. Ruiz telling, uh, I believe that was Williams, uh, to to get on the the block against the smaller defender. Yeah. Definitely Williams there, and he draws the easy foul on that one. If David Kubiot at just six feet is going to have an awful difficult time in that position. Oh, and then the hook pass. Tried to get it to Romero. A little too low, and it skitters out of bounds. It'll be Halcones ball. Cubion has a seat. Israel Gutierrez in the game now for Alcones. He played one minute against Esteli in December, did not play in the January game. But Gabriel Giron strikes again from outside. Lead back to double figures. Romero had it, didn't know what to do with it. Finally got it out to Ruiz. Ruiz, the one-hand pass, nearly a little too far for Hodge. Hodge spins, shot clock running down, the floater. That falls in, wow! Yeah, that was nice. 63 now, and that pass deflected out of bounds by Hodge. <laughs> Catch and shoot three pointer missed. Tatter Fernandez. Now Halcones, or Esteli rather, trying to chip their way back into this one. And there's two more for Ismail Romero. Romero now 21 points. Second only in the game to Gabriel Giron, who has 22. Rohn kicks it out. Three on the way. That's good. Jordan Glenn hits that one. Yeah, the uh, the first half three point woes. I don't think are they have gone away now. Oh, Ruiz. It's not going to be a shooting foul. There's say he was passing it. Foul nonetheless. Alconis over the limit. Yeah, I, I know I promised I wouldn't do math, but I believe Alconis was 33% from outside in the first half. They're currently 38% on the game, which, again, not to do too hard of math, but that means they've got to be 
believe over the 40% mark now in the second half. Somewhere in there. I'll trust you. Thank you. Second free throw on the way from Ruiz. I'm not any better at math than you are. How Kone's shoot good. <laughs> Second free throw missed by Ruiz, and it's so it stays at 74-66. Inside one minute to play third quarter. Glenn thought about that three-pointer and then loses it out of bounds. <laughs> and he covers his face in shame after that one. Quick move by Jonas Enriquez. Three on the other side, missed. Don't hear a lot of Ruiz with a miss this evening. No. Inside 30 seconds to play. The floater won't go. Rebound stolen away by Gutierrez. The three missed by Glenn. Shot clock off, game clock at 12. Hodge, high right side, clock at five. Hodge, and they're gonna say Tyler Fernandez kicked that ball. So with 3.4 to play. No, they said it, <laughs> they said the offensive player kicked the ball. What? He, the ball did come in contact with his leg. I, I've had some debates on this rule. I, it's not something that comes up a lot, but to me, if you're not intentionally trying to move your foot into the ball as an offensive player, the defender, I, I personally don't think it should be a kick, kick ball. But now the three from half court from Alexis Elson are nearly banked in. Looked like he traveled before that shot, but. At any rate, we go to the fourth quarter with Alcones on top by eight, 74, 66. We are back in just a couple of moments, live from Solapa with fourth quarter action. This is ECL America's play. Alcones de Solapa leading Real Esteli, 74, 66. Back to Ignacio Universitario in Salapa, Veracruz, Mexico. This battle between Real Esteli and Alcones de Salapa. Getting into the fourth quarter. A 
Cornish leads by eight, 74 66. Cornish outscored Realist Lee in that third quarter, 25 21. Alongside Andrew Hunt, my name is Craig Feta. Welcome in to our viewers in the USA on FanDuel TV in South America on DirecTV and around the rest of the world on the BCL America's YouTube channel. Ismail Romero calling for the review. I think he's got a point. I think that went off of Israel oh, Gutierrez. Yeah. Well, he, he's got it's a foul. That's a foul for sure. Well, yeah. Yeah. So they are going to review it. At the very least for possession. That's that's exactly what I was talking about. I don't recall. I, I believe it was in the, our first game is that's the kind of foul I want if now, in this case, I think the player legitimately was making a play for the ball. But right. if I just wanted to foul on purpose, that's the kind of foul I'm going to do. I'm going to try to make sure I hit the ball with my hand, but I'm going to hit every part of your body with the rest of my arm to make sure that, you know, we're getting we're getting our worth for the foul. I That's one of, as, as someone who maybe part of my, the best part of my game was being able to foul. Uh, I thought <laughs> that, uh, if I if I got a foul that was barely like a slap on the wrist of the of the offensive player and got called for that, I I was kind of upset. I was like, well, next time let me know if you're gonna yeah, call that. I'll just knock him on the floor. Right? Yeah. I only get five of these, and as I said, I'm <laughs> I'm not gonna use all of them. So, come on. Gutierrez even got his elbow up high. Look at that. He got the forearm yeah. to the head. Oh, that's a, that's, this is, that was a nice takedown there. Yeah, that's an they impressive They may be foul. reviewing this for an unsportsmanlike. He did come into contact yeah, with I the think... ball, but there was definitely contact with the head. Yeah, his the left arm to me, again, my opinion seems to be a little different than the refs. The left arm is fine, but his right arm, like you're saying, the forearm elbow area came in contact with the neck before he brought his left yeah. arm down in what I would determine the play on the ball. So they did whistle it as an unsportsmanlike after the review. Romero hits one of two. Realist Lee will get the ball back after the unsportsman line. And now Gutierrez and Romero, brief conversation. Terrell Holloway back into the game for Real Lee, and Romero loses it. Cheddar Fernandez between the rings, waiting for some help. Here comes Gutierrez. Now Giron. Shot clock at eight. Works his way into the paint. The finish by Jordan Glenn won't go in, but he does draw the foul. It's always the help guy that comes over <laughs> that gets the foul. Yeah, that's... And sometimes too they get they get left out. You <laughs> you don't really help the helper very much by uh, just letting somebody. I've I've been in that situation where the primary defender just kind of lets them come over to me at the help, and I'm like, ah, uh, I was like, I'm I'm supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> I mean, however, normally in that situation, I figure it's better I get the foul than whoever I'm helping out. So I'm not too angry about it. Second free throw good for Jordan Glenn. It's back to a nine point lead.
Fernandez We're getting into that back to your own for three. We're getting into that territory now where Halcones probably wants to utilize the clock. Which, which they did an excellent oh job of on this possession. Raul Delgado, lightly used player, 33 years old. Only played a total of nine minutes against Real Esteli in the previous two games. Steps up and drains a three-pointer from the logo. Yeah, those, those are, that's like the perfect possession for this part time of the game. When you're in the yeah. lead like this, you use up almost 30 seconds. You get a shot right at the end of the buzzer. They, they'd already taken one shot and gotten the rebound, cleared it out, took a shot with three seconds left on the shot clock, hits the three. If, if I can get three or four possessions like that and make one or two of them, I, I, it's going to be tough for me to lose it, with what the differential is now. Assuming, again, it's important I collect rebounds on the defensive end. I don't want second chances for the opposing team. No, nobody needs to leak out. We can all just go get the rebound on defense. Like I said, I'm, I'm looking to take up 22 to 23 minutes, of, or minutes, seconds of the 24 second shot clock before I get a shot. At. That's a lot. Maybe, let's say 14 or 15. So what you're saying though is you don't want to just run down and jack up a shot. Right. I want to I want to set something up. The only shot that I want to jack up is like in that scenario, if it's down to the end of the shot clock, go go for it. Bombs away. But I want to look to get something to the basket. I, what I really want is probably a pick and roll with about eight or nine seconds left on the clock. And I'll I'll take whatever I get in that. If I get a foul, a jump shot, dump off for a an attempt at a layup. All those are fun. Hodge bumped on that shot, no call, and he's pretty frustrated there, as you can tell. Fernandez. Feeds the big man, Israel Gutierrez. He goes up and jacks that one. And this is looking a little out of hand. We'll see. He is 14 inside eight minutes to play. That three-point attempt blocked by Raul Delgado. And now Romero hard off the glass, won't go. Now you're going to want to burn that 15 to 20 here. Now see, so they're already where I want to be. Now I'm, I'm good with whatever yep. we get at this point. Fernandez. Into the corner, oh, Giron for excellent. three. Flash! If, Boy, if that what was we taken get a, straight out of the Andrew Hunt playbook there. Yeah, and they get a wide open three in the corner. That I mean, that's excellent. I'm, I don't care if he misses five of those. I'm happy with that shot. I say, hey, that's the best shot we could get right there. I like it. Lead now 17. 467. We're getting the ball into play. Alconis wanting to make a substitution. Gabriel Giron getting a little bit of a breather here. Well deserved. He's got 25 points, five rebounds, six assists, and two steals. Now Romero for three. That was that's not his shot. He's he's 0 of 2 from three-point range heading into this game. And if I'm Halcones, I'll let him shoot that all day long. And now another outside shot goes in. That one by Chandler Fernandez. And Halcone is absolutely rolling now. Yeah, that, that last shot by Romero kind of signals that, uh, you know, he's given up. But they'll, the coach will talk to him. They're a quality club. Uh, they're going to they're gonna finish this one out strong. I just don't know that 20 points, basically, is, uh, you know, it's kind of an insurmountable deficit at this point. I think you're putting the nail in the coffin a little early there, partner. 
when you have guys like Terrell Holloway, Walter Hodge, Ismael Romero, Emmett Williams, Donis Hernandez, or uh, Donis Enriquez, these guys can put it up. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, but it's just like I say, it's, it's unlikely, I would say. Yeah, the balance of probability. Right. You know, we see we see those games where people come back, but uh, they're one in 50, something like that. So now if I'm the coach, if I'm the coach right here, I say, hey, guys, we're the one in 50. That's us right now. Yeah. <laughs> we're them. You, gotta you didn't believe. see the first... You didn't see the December window that Paul Mokeski and I worked. It seemed like we had a number of 15 to 20 point comebacks late in games. So I don't know what it is about this particular event. Well, we saw what, what was the run they went on earlier before how Kones did a, a run of their own? Yeah, it was 15 2. So that would make things interesting if they could do that in the next five minutes and still have, you know, almost two minutes left with uh, down six. That math would get us. Oh, my. What, what's Holloway happening here? Hand, hand fighting with Raul Delgado on the way down and draws the foul on Delgado. <laughs> Holloway, he, he reminds me of uh, Chris Paul. If you, if you want to pick a guy from the NBA. Yeah. That's his style. He, he kind of gets into the the situations with guys where I don't even think they're doing anything, but he just makes the contact and the ref blows the whistle. You see most of the defenders kind of throwing their hands up. Romero again a wide oh, no. open three. Like I said, Halcones will let him shoot that all day long. Now Ruiz, floater from eight feet or so, no good, but there for go. the tip in is Fakuade. First time we've called his name in a while. He had a couple of buckets early. Now he's got six. Now the, the same Fernandez. thing as I say on offense. The same thing I say on offense here where I want to use up clock. Oh, turnover there. Oh, he doesn't think so. Saying that went off somebody's head. Interesting. Yeah, oh, you can tell that glanced, that glanced off of Israel Gutierrez's head. Hey, I can't believe that that pass would have been that far off without something like that happening. You saw Gutierrez even flinch after it bounced off his head. Oh, and I'm a sure turnaround. That's potentially a five to six point swing right there. And you can see the shoulders, Real Esteli collectively sag after that three pointer. The lead is now 20. Yeah, I mentioned before this last flurry of activity, uh, as I mentioned, using up clock on the offensive end for Halcones, uh, about three possessions ago, uh, where Real Esteli got the uh, put back. That possession took a long time, only for two points. So I'm okay with that too, if I'm Halcones. Another oh. three, Jordan Flynn. Oh. <laughs> and Halcones just pouring it on now. Yeah, I mentioned earlier in my math, they were at 33 in the, the first half from three, now their cumulative is 42%. So that means close to 50 in the second. Alconis outscoring Real Esteli 18-3 in this fourth quarter so far. 18-5 now after that bucket there by Michael Facuade. You, uh, fourth quarter started still thinking I'm Real Esteli didn't. Still thinking I put the nail in the coffin prematurely, Craig. No, not now. Aguade with the steal. I, say, I didn't think it would be this bad. I thought we'd 
have a little more showing. Yeah, I thought Esteli would make a run at him. I thought they'd get it certainly to within five to eight points. Yeah. Now, Conus is oh, not missing. <laughs> I think I've definitely been a coach on the losing end of something like this, and I'm just like, just call it, just <laughs> quit, we're done. <laughs> Coming up on three and a half minutes to play. Lynn takes it himself, hammered out of the air. Oh. And Lynn gets up and shoves Romero. Yep. There's absolutely no need for that. Yeah, Glenn, Glenn hit the deck pretty hard on that one, but I and I didn't see anything malicious from Romero. I, I understand no. Glenn, you know, that's that's a situation you feel like you could get hurt. Hopefully cooler heads to prevail. Luckily the game's not close, so it should be easy enough to just probably take those guys out of the game and finish things out. And I don't think it was even Romero that made the harder contact with him. So the officials will sort this out. Again, our officials for this game. Juan Fernandez of Argentina, Jenna Renault of the USA, and Romero in Chauspe of Brazil. And they may go to the replay on this and see who exactly did what. That's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to watch the sequence of events here. Have you have you seen any future repercussions uh, if there's any kind of, you know, like the the potential for fighting there, future games, any anything like that? No, usually there's no cumulative effect. Like you might have a yellow card. And a yellow card equals a red card. So here's Glenn coming in. Romero. Oh, that. You, you can see here. So Romero just yeah, has Romero, the forearm yep. shimmy right in the ribs. Yep. That, absolutely. That, that, sh it's worse that than should I be a disqualifying. Thought. Yeah. Because we were looking at the other guy. So absolutely, Romero, that should be a disqualifying foul as far as I'm concerned. He made no play on the ball. He went up with both arms and shoved the guy in the chest on his way to the bucket. And no matter what the, if, if the refs don't disqualify him, if I'm his coach, I'm taking him out of the game. Just not necessarily, I, I don't think, you know, people do things like that. I don't think it was malicious, but it's just like, hey, we'll get you out of here. Game's over. No need to, you know, get too spicy. Yeah. I'd like to see it maybe a couple more times here. Because I want to see how the reaction was from Glenn. He popped up immediately and shoved Ismael Romero. That should at least draw a technical. Saw Francisco Garth step in immediately and get between Romero and uh, Glenn. So let's see how they adjudicate this. We've got an unsportsmanlike. Shooting foul on Romero. I'm not sure if I got that backwards or not, because that certainly should have been an unsportsmanlike on Ismail Romero.
number is Glenn here? Number one. Glenn's number one. So it does certainly appear as if Ismael Romero has been ejected from the game, and rightfully so. So there's Garth going up, making the initial contact. And yeah, I mean, you could tell. Yeah, both Romero forms. went up with. Yeah, with both forearms into Glenn's chest. He made absolutely no play on the ball. Now Jordan Glenn gets whistled for the unsportsmanlike as well for his reaction, popping up and immediately shoving Romero. So Romero's been ejected. Glenn hit with the unsportsmanlike. Having been involved in a couple of things like that, it's it's pretty difficult to not get up. I even like oh, there's yeah. been times I've shoved a guy and then I immediately think, okay, I'm not going to fight this person. <laughs> but I just <laughs> that was my first reaction. I'm like, that hurt. Like, I'm going to at least give you a shove, and then I, you know, come back to my senses. Then, but then you then you remember you're a lover and not a fighter. Exactly. Yeah. So Glenn misses the first free throw. Should have three more coming because the bench was assessed a technical as well. So there should be a total of five free throws here. That's number three. Oh, beg your pardon. Now they removed the technical. There's number four. So David Rosario empties the bench now. Andy Perez, Farrell Poff, Bartel Lopez, and Jensen Campbell all come in. That's probably the, the right move here. Just get everything settled down. Acknowledge that you're probably conceding the game here. Francisco Garth. Bring it up underneath. Here's Jader Fernandez. Martel Lopez picks up the loose ball. 34 years old, Martel Lopez. Oh. Drive by Francisco Garth. No good, but he does have a trip to the free throw line coming. Seven seventy-three. The wheels came off at the start of this fourth quarter. Real Esteli. I don't think either of us saw that coming. Yeah. Cones outscoring Esteli twenty-three-seven so far in this fourth quarter. I thought when I talked about how even I thought the game would be. Yeah. The, the joke in my head that I didn't verbalize was, "Now watch it be a blowout," and I didn't <laughs> say it because I really didn't believe it. Then here we are. <laughs> Fernandez hits another three-pointer, and Halcones has hit the century mark. Fernandez now 15 points. Uh, yeah, there's been a couple others that we thought, you know, there was a team that was maybe slightly inferior, and we thought, you know, this is, you know, they'll put up a good fight, but the, the end of this game is pretty much decided. 
and they made it, yeah. things interesting. We may have even had someone pull out a victory. I, I can't recall. Well, Obras pulled out the overtime win against Franca. That was the one, yeah. And yesterday, Esteli held off Gladiadores. Don't forget, Gladiadores had a six-point lead late. We, I, it was my opinion that Esteli was the better team in that matchup, but yes. Jensen Campbell whistled for that foul. Credit to Gladiadores. They were the better team yesterday. Unfortunately, Almost. they ended up on the yeah, short end <laughs> yeah. of the stick and do not advance to the quarterfinals. So it looks like Group A is going to be set. Alcones de Salapa will win the group. Real Esteli will be second as they look at another review here. So Real Esteli will likely play Kimsa in the quarters. And were they reviewing that for an unsportsmanlike as well? I don't. I mean, again, I by the letter not, of the I... law, by the letter of the law, that may be he's behind him. Didn't play the ball. Does he grab his arm there? off arm down. Yeah, he grabbed the arm. Okay. All right. Don't do yeah, that. Yeah, watch, <laughs> watch the left arm. Grabs the left well, arm. Well, see, I couldn't. Yeah, I could, it, it almost looked like he went to hit it and then, you know, didn't. Yeah. This, this angle will tell us for sure. I think you're right, but I want to see it for myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he, he whacked it pretty good on the left arm. Why? More we look at that. Yeah, that should be an unsportsmanlike, and it is. Yeah, just don't do that. Not, not, not right now. Yeah, yeah. Not when you're trailing by 27 points, and it's already been a little testy. I certainly don't think, think Campbell was trying to hurt Elsner no. on that play, but. It had the potential where if he had even inadvertently made a little contact with the lower body or the upper body, he could have sent Elsener careening into the crowd. And that could have turned things very ugly. So, yeah, you just don't do it in that case. Elsener misses both free throws. Jada Fernandez says, I want to get another shot off from behind the arc. Tough work there by Israel Gutierrez. And did they wave that basket off? Did they say he traveled? Yeah, they say he took too many steps. I'm, I thought he kept his pivot, but. Yep. Most players Jason rarely Campbell travel. Three. <laughs> Campbell missed the three-point attempt. He had not taken a three-point basket attempt in this tournament yet. Four of eight from the floor overall. Shot clock at two. Another three up. And it, oh, I thought that went through. Sorry, never mind. Don't mind me. <laughs> and then a nice job there by Bartel Lopez to throw that off. The legs of Israel Gutierrez and maintain possession. And it's unfortunate that Israel Romero's night had to end like that. He was having a heck of a game 24 points, nine rebounds. And I think now as he sits there in the locker room, he probably feels pretty bad about it. Extremely frustrated at that point, and he should know better. And I think he was trying to make that known before he left the court. Yeah, and something I, I've, I've liked. Almost said I almost thought I read his lips that he said, you know, I apologize or my fault or something like that. 
Yeah, he, he seemed remorseful, and most all the teams we've seen, that's been really great for me to watch that, you know, they, they compete hard, but they, uh, you can see they talk to each other. Some of these guys, it, it's uh, my assumption they've played together or, or uh, in other leagues and stuff like that, so there seems to be a pretty good camaraderie. Yeah, these guys have seen so much of each other in intercontinental tournaments, sub-zone tournaments, qualifying tournaments, at the senior national team level, at the club level. It's just like the NBA in the U.S. It's just a big fraternity out there. And the shot clock technically expired before the end of that game, but nobody's gonna nobody's gonna call this one. So the final score, 100 to 75. Alcones blows the doors off of Real Estelí in the fourth quarter, outscoring them 26 to nine. So Alcones de Salapa, the Group A winner. Got two games tomorrow. Boca Juniors and Flamengo. Another great Argentina Brazil matchup. At 11 10 a.m. local time, 9 10 a.m. Eastern time. Followed up by tomorrow evening, Sao Paulo and Nacional of Uruguay. That will take place at 9 40 p.m. local time, 7 40 p.m. Eastern. Quick spin through the numbers for Halcones. Gabriel Garon led all scorers with 25 points. He had five boards and six assists. Jordan Glynn added 18 points, eight rebounds. Peter Fernandez, 15 points. Israel Gutierrez ended up pulling down seven rebounds in his short time. Halcones, 63% from two point range. Very hearty 42% from three-point range as well. Real Esteli, 48% overall, 25% from the arc. Israel, uh, Israel, Ismail, not Israel, Ismail Romero finished with 24 points, nine rebounds before he was ejected. Terrell Holloway and Jared Ruiz each with 13 points. No one else in doubles for Real Esteli. So Esteli finishes second in Group A. They will likely take on Kimsa out of Group B in the quarters. Again, thanks for watching all our fans of the USA on FanDuel TV and South America on DirecTV and around the rest of the world on the BCL Americas YouTube channel. For my partner, Andrew Hunt, my name is Craig Feta. Saying thanks for watching and so long for now.